from Miami Beach, Florida, it's theCUBE, covering Acronis Global Cyber Summit 2019. Brought to you by Acronis. Hey, welcome back everyone. It's theCUBE's coverage of Acronis Global Cyber Summit 2019 here in Miami Beach, Florida, at the Fountain Blue Hotel. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE. We're here with Craig Weir, Director of Cloud Portfolio at Ingram Micro. Welcome back to theCUBE. Thank welcome you. Welcome to theCUBE. Director of Cloud Portfolio at Ingram Micro Cloud. So you guys have a cloud, and yeah. you guys have sales, yeah, we technicals have, out there. We got everything. So we have the platform itself. So we have our own platform that uh, it's used by one third of the world telcos. We have uh, large bars, D bars, SPs using our platform. We're also a cloud aggregator. So we offer, offer pretty much any vendor solution on there. So today we have over 200 solutions on our platform. Um, we offer services to help partners grow and expand because it. Jumping from where they are today, where they want to go tomorrow, is very difficult. So we offer those services. So it's a full package. You know what? I'm really impressed with Ingram. I got to tell you, Ingram Micro. You guys have essentially reinvented you guys self in 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 plain sight. Yeah. So it's like changing the airplane out at 35,000 feet. It's really hard to do. Yeah. You guys have done it. You've essentially taken a distribution model to the cloud, can maintain that stickiness with your clients and partners, mm -hmm. and now have automation built in. Yeah, we always talk about we're building the plane while we fly it. And we've been doing that for 10 years. We were the first to get in the cloud. We're the world's largest distributor, we know that, but times are changing and you need to adopt with it. So we want to get ahead of the curve, being that we want to own the platform. So we made large acquisitions to be the number one platform provider. Um, but we also want to do the value add service because partners today want to make that change. They're starting to make that change, but they're not sure exactly yeah. how to do it or how to monetize it correctly. Yeah. So we realized early on we need to make a, a massive uh, investment and DNA change of what we do. The old word of pick, pack, and ship is gone, right? <laughs> Distributor now means a million things what we do. We're more of a service provider than we are anything else. Yeah, it's so funny, you know, and also uh, gross margins used to be higher in the old days. When they started when they started to get hit and they started getting out of that direct distribution, mm. there was margin pressure. And again, yeah. you know, channel businesses are very efficient. The, 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 the weak don't survive very long, yeah. and the, the ones that are smart actually evolve. It's a great case where you can wrap services around it, and with the cloud you get operating leverage. Yeah. So you have an investment, now you have a business model for the next 10, 20 years. Yeah, you think about distribution basis points. It's a term that doesn't really exist outside distribution. We're razor thin on those margins. Uh, but to your point on cloud, there's a much heavier lift and it's much more proactive selling. So obviously, we want to focus on the area where we can have growth at a higher profitable rate. And if we can wrap our own platform and services around that and make even more money and give more value to the channel, why not? Well, that's what the channel wants. They want profitability. They want to keep their customers and increase their gross profit. Yeah. And that's from services. Yeah, exactly. And now with software economic margins coming in, the you know, marginal uh, revenue is higher. Uh, software economics are great. Yeah, and I think a lot of partners today, MSPs, LARS, VARS, DVARS, they don't really know what is their company actually worth? What's the multiple, right? Um, and they're trying to do that assessment of how much your business actually services and how much is that just reoccurring on an annuity basis, not managed services in some respect. So for us, we look at that and say, okay, how do we actually help you migrate to that business? We want to get yeah. you to 60, 50, 70% uh, services led where you're making an average of 10, 20, 30 points. And a lot of your partners too have, have long-standing relationships with customers. Yeah. And so by you innovating, that just trickles down to them. That makes it sticky for you guys. Great business model. Craig, talk about your relationship with Acronis. We're here at their Global Cyber Summit 2019. Talk about uh, yeah. what you guys are doing with them. So we've been with Acronis for six years now. Um, we are the largest distributor worldwide. We offer them pretty much every country we operate. Um, they're one of our leading, if not actually they are our leading, backup disaster recover uh, and cyber security solution. Um, we have an amazing partnership uh, at every single level. When it comes to how we go to market, how we back into position, how we recruit and enable partners, it's really next to nine. We have very, very aggressive timelines and goals for next year for where we want to go um, and where that means is actually growth, expansion, service offering, no matter headcount we have towards this initiative. Um, Acronis is our number one provider. Yeah, they have a similar DNA and they're thinking like you guys do with the cloud, thinking about that, how that transformation business model evolved for Ingram Micro. They are seeing it now with their unique, integrated, well, it won't be unique for long, because I think everyone yeah. is going to copy it. This integrated, holistic view, having a platform that's an enabling, not just hardware, they yeah. have infrastructure, yep. but they got a platform layer which is an enabling capabilities for sets of services on top. Yeah. Theirs and their ISVs and developers. Yeah. I mean, that's just a proven platform formula. What's your feedback on that? Do you see that 
translating well in the field uh, and the partner networks? Yeah, very well. I think today you think of uh, Backham disaster recovery as legacy backup disaster recovery. Where am I backing up to? Why am I backing? It's for that disaster, not remediation of issues, security risks. And you're seeing them go into a completely security play, which some would argue say it makes no sense. Your, your backup disaster recovery, your BDR. But if you think of the ransomware attacks today, the fact that I can have a safe copy, I can dial up in minutes, where ransomware is no longer an issue, um, and how they position that as really a security end-to-end -end solution. It doesn't mean that you don't need any other security. Obviously, you still do. Um, but it comes out of very different angle. And I think it provides a bit of clarity uh, to customers who are confused. Yeah. They said, yeah. that, you know, earlier today they mentioned how many different security providers are coming open every single day. No one wants to buy another tool. No, and there's there's no <laughs> more large mega offer. There's no one solution. You know, solving the ransomware problem certainly is a great way to get beachhead in any account. Yeah. Hey, I got the best mousetrap for solving ransomware. In that case, that's when a better mousetrap works. Yeah. You're right to the front of the line. Yeah. And then once you're in there, then you got to figure it out. This is what's interesting to me is that you know, it's a data, it's a data solution. Mm -hmm. And if they can crack that nut, it's a winning formula. It, you know, you think of a really basic, what are we trying to do? Who are we trying to protect? Either people or information, yeah. right? We're not worried about protecting people today, we're talking about information. So at the end of the day, what's most vital to a company's organization? You're looking at their customer data, their personal data, financial data. And if you think about what you want them to have access to, how do you want to uh, remediate that? So the ability to kind of the end to end and have that story, which is really, really important to the customer, to have that clarity on why, yeah. is critical. Well, you guys do a great job of security. I read your reports every year that go out at VMworld and reInvent, all the different events you guys go to. You guys are a great uh, security group, so you know, that's a, the props to those guys. I want to get back to this, this data backup thing that you mentioned earlier, because we had some insight from our conversation I was just on with the Forrester analyst, where if you look at backup and recovery, it was basically because there was some operational disruption. Yeah. And that had nothing to do with security. It was like, lights no. go out, hurricane, yeah. Hurricane Sandy, whatever happened, something's happening. And that was all built around the continuity of, it's down, roll it back. Mm -hmm. But now the disruption is security. It is. So no Constant. one's actually thought about it that way. So I think these guys have a great angle on thinking of it like, well, if the disruption's security, that changes, that eliminates almost all the current solutions because they're just rolling back bad code. Yeah, I don't think it eliminates all of them, but it's <laughs> well, a great Well, the majority point. of them. Yeah, I mean, you, you sit there and go, well, why is a Kronos a security provider? That makes no sense. And you sit back and start thinking about the approach, because again, we're thinking old BDNR. The new world of backup, backup and disaster recovery is not the disaster being a natural occurrence or something that something were to happen. It's the every single day cyber attack and ransomware that's happening on a regular basis. That's the, that's the new norm. Yeah. The new norm isn't the hurricane, isn't the cyclone. It's security yeah. attacks every day. And they're happening weekly too. Towns are being taken out. Uh, Craig, um, observations from your standpoint, being an industry participant, um, you know, got experience out there in the field, talk to a lot of customers, you guys have yeah. your own cloud. Just in general, the top story in this whole cyber protection, security, data world, what's the top story in your mind? And if someone says, hey, what's the most important story that needs to be continually covered and talked about? I think what we're missing today is a lot of partners aren't protecting their own house, right? At the end of the day, when an MSP is looking after their end user's data, do they really understand what they're responsible for? Do they have the right system in place, right? It's back to the constant security attacks. We're seeing time and time again, MSPs, medium to small, are having massive breaches and going into business and they're done, right? We see MSPs who want to go to MSSP, but that requires What's either that uh, managed security service provider. Okay, got it. All right. so, you're an MSP specializing dedicated on, on in security. You have a SOC, which means maybe you have a security operational center, meaning that you have to either buy that or go and invest on it, or maybe partner with somebody. It's incredibly expensive. So MSPs today. The compliance and the insurance alone. It, it, the compliance, insurance, the, the expertise, there's a massive shortage of people. Yeah. So we kind of see the MSPs today, maybe five, maybe 10% could go make that leap to MSP. So everyone else is figuring out how do I manage the security space? I have all these different offers I have and solutions I have. A lot of them are homegrown, they're not very good. So at the end of the day, when we look at what's missing is, hey, if you're an MSP, is your own house protected? Before you try to protect someone else's, because if you're managing all that data for that partner, you better make sure your house is protected. Protect your own house, and I think that's interesting. What's interesting coming out of the Cronus is that, I mean, it's, it's a little bit of a flash, flashy announcement, but the blockchain notary, they're saying, hey, we'll protect the data in all forms. Yeah. We'll, we'll encrypt it on, on a blockchain. Yeah. So well, that speaks to the supply chain problem. Well, well data is a supply chain. It, it is, and you sit there, you sit there, again, let's, let's talk old backup disaster recovery. You have data somewhere, it's a copy of your file. 
do you know it's a clean copy, an authentic file? Do you know that something hasn't happened to it? And it, before we never would have known that. Yeah. Now we do. Yeah. Well, I've always said in the cube, Dave Vellante and I talk about storage is not about the storage CPUs and the hardware. It's about the data yeah. that's being stored. Take care of your own house first before you take on other people's data. I yeah. love that analogy. Yeah, and you know, customers are getting smart these days. Yeah. Customers are looking, they're doing reading. You're like, most customers are 80% of the time, they're looking at word of mouth, yeah. a trusted advisor, they're doing research online. So they're demanding this. Craig, I really appreciate your insights. Thanks for taking the time to share. Take a minute to give a plug for what you guys do with the cloud. How do I? How does someone get involved and work with you? What's a customer for you? Take a minute to give a plug out for what you guys yeah, do. Yeah, so Inker Micro, so we're, we're, uh, we're the largest cloud organization in the world. Uh, we'll, we'll talk US specifically. So Cloud? U.S. Cloud. Amazon, right? bigger. Uh, as a distributor. Okay, like distributor clarify. cloud. <laughs> yeah, distributor cloud, yeah. Uh, we're, we're, Just so making sure you keep it on the yeah, right no, track. Yeah, no, it's a good point. So we actually are, we do distribute AWS, we do distribute Azure, we're the largest for both of them yeah. in the channel perspective. Um, but partners today, what I would say the opportunity to them is there's those who play very heavily in this space and those that do not. Everyone is somewhere in the middle. Um, working with Inger Micro, the ability to really, what we said, the cloud awesomeness roadmap, which Renee presented earlier, of taking a partner from infancy, maybe they're doing a handful of SaaS offers today, to going 10, 20 offers on, on a regular basis. We really enable and train them to make that jump, both financially and from a skill set Can anyone get involved? Do you guys have a vetting process? They have a, uh, yeah. a, a cloud SaaS so we, app? Yeah, so we have a, so a cloud marketplace. If you're an Ingram Micro account today, you have a free account into our cloud marketplace, which is our e-commerce buying engine, which is built on Cloud Blue, which is our platform. Um, free access to it, online purchasing of any SaaS offer you want, depending on what the authorizations are by the SaaS offer. Um, free access to our team when it comes to how to enable and support them, whether it's security, UCAS, backup disaster recovery, uh, public cloud, Microsoft, you name it. Um, and it's really a team dedicated to help the problem solvers, which are, as everyone here today, solve the current problem of how to get more of a nudity subscription basis. Awesome, well congratulations. Uh, cloud marketplaces are hot, you guys are number one uh, channel, distributor, cloud, whatever it's called. Is there a category? Like there's a um, we're making a new category. Channel, right? channel cloud. Yeah, you could say you know, uh, it's distributor, distributor cloud. Distribution service provider. Yeah. Congratulations, your micro uh, trans building the plane while they're flying. I love that one too. <laughs> this is the cube. We're flying here in Miami Beach, the Fontainebleau Hotel for Cronus's Global Cyber Summit 2019. We'll be back with more coverage after this short break.